write any DAX measure in just three easy steps. Now I realize it feels like a tall claim, but just stick with me and I will prove it to you. Now, before we dive into this though, let's talk quickly about why is DAX important? Now, if you've been using Power BI already, you already know that to master Power BI, you must master DAX measures. And why is that? Because DAX measures are the beating heart of Power BI. Every single visualization, every single chart, table, matrix, or any custom visual is powered by a measure. Now, maybe you are now starting to create what are called explicit measures, defining your own, or maybe you're dra still dragging columns over to the measure uh, in the visuals. Now, you have to understand that that simply creates an implicit measure. Power BI is still creating a measure under the hood for you. Either way, DAX measures are what's always powering your visualizations. Now, the good news is that non-techies like you and me can understand and write DAX, and DAX really doesn't need to be the scary thing that techies have made it to be. And I know because even though I'm now a Microsoft MVP, a Microsoft partner, best-selling Power BI author, and I've trained and coached thousands of users across the world on Power BI, but I started off as a non-techie business user just like you, and I'm still one at heart. But the challenge was I had to figure out everything the hard way, but that's why I've made it my mission to make it easier for you. So today, I wanna show you how you can write any DAX measure in just three easy steps. So we're gonna show you a DAX problem, and then we're gonna walk you through the solution showing you the steps. And that's the crucial part in this presentation. It's not about giving you the fish, right? That's the solution. I mean, you say, oh, Avi solved this problem for me. And I'm like, oh, here's the solution. This is about teaching you to fish. So once you know the steps to follow to write any DAX measure, well, now you can catch all the fish you want. All right, my friends, so let's start with that, writing any DAX measure in three easy steps. But one thing I want you to think about before we, uh, before we start with the steps is think about how valuable would this be to you if you had the confidence to step into any DAX problem and solve it, what would that enable for you? What would then unlock for you? What's the potential for you to dare? What can you achieve? And I would say you can achieve a lot because again, DAX measures are at the heart of mastering Power BI. So, okay, so let's get started with the DAX problem. So this question was asked in our live Q&A call and I'll walk you through. So what the user has done is he, uh, they have created uh, this set of tables using filters over here on this side. And it's really straightforward, at least for us humans. And we have categorized that uh, our customers into lost, declining, new customers, and growth customers. And each one of this kind of makes intuitive sense. So lost customers, you can see they had sales in the prior year. They do not have sales in the current year. So therefore, there are lost customers. And we can add up uh, the impact on the sales. The same thing with declining. They had some sales prior year. And well, their sales just declined this year. And we can calculate the net impact for that. And of course, we do the same for new customers, no sales last year, sales this year, what's the impact? Growth customers, some sales last year, and what's more sales this year, and what's the net change year over year? Now, of course, they were able to do this in tables and filters, but what they really wanted to do was to be able to write measures to calculate that. And again, measures do make you more powerful because what they let you do is they let you display a table like this and they let you uh, create like a waterfall chart like this uh, where you can see that, um, you know, we have uh, uh, 
uh, if you notice over here, you can hover and say, yep, you know, so loss, the impact for loss, declining, and then new and growth. And of course, this is the total. Pretty elegant. And of course, you can slice and dice it. I don't have it here. But if you have like a product type or product category, you could click on that and the whole thing will filter just to that. So again, measures give you a lot of power. And that's our goal. Now, the one we're going to focus on is this growth measure, because really, if you can write one, the other ones are pretty similar. So think about how you would write that DAX measure, which checks the uh, the product category, checks the customer, and sees if the sales grew year over year. Well, so that was that is certainly an interesting problem, right? Now uh, it doesn't matter. Maybe you are at the beginning of this journey, or you're further on, and maybe you know how to solve this problem. Like you say, I'm like, yep, I got it, Avi. I think I can figure this out. Or again, you're getting started, and you're like. I don't really know. That's not the important part. We're just using that. This is an example. Either way, keep watching because again, we're trying to teach you the steps. We're going to teach you how to catch that fish. We're going to teach you how to write any DAX measure in three steps. Let's start with step one. Step one is what I call human learning. And this is very important because before we can teach the machine, Power BI, we first need to understand how we humans are solving the problem. Now, it seems like, what are you talking about, Avi? And here's the challenge, my friends. So as of now, humans are smarter than machines, right? And especially because we can make these intuitive leaps. And that's what we do when we're looking at a problem. We can intuitively jump to the answer. But machines can't quite do that very well. So the step one is to actually slow down that human learning. And instead of that, that leap, you have to break it down step by step and try to understand almost dumb yourself down, slow yourself down and understand step by step how you as a human are solving that problem before we can go any further. Now, this may seem trivial, but it is not. And again, you're going to have to uh, uh, do some work here. So in this case, we were trying to figure out how to get this number. Now, believe it or not, this took us 30 minutes to pin down. So again, this was asked in a live Q&A call. And I have the recording. It's par part of our Power BI advanced program where I show this uh, problem and the solution step by step. Um, and the original recording is 30 minutes. All I did was just wanted to make sure that I understand the human solution, the human learning. Now, of course, I know your time is valuable, so I'm just going to cut to the chase here. And this is the final steps that we got to. All right now, it's going to seem straightforward, but again, hindsight is 2020, right? So uh, for, when you're working on the problem, make sure to slow yourself down and write things out step by step, just like we did. So the steps here are, we're going to examine each product subcategory, right? So that's where we start. So we say for each product subcategory, and for each one of those, we check each customer, right? Fair enough. And then for that combination, we check whether the sales year over year percentage is greater than zero. Essentially, we're checking for growth customers. And if that is true, then we filter and compile that set of customers and oh, these are all growth customers. And once we have that, we calculate the sales year over year change for this set of filtered set of customers. And in the end, we sum it all up, right? So that's how a human would do it step by step. So that's step one, that's the human learning. Let's move on to step two. Step two, <laughs> You do what a baby would do and think about how babies learn a language. And that's the same thing for us. DAX is like a new language for us. So I want you to think about how babies start to speak a new language. And what they do is that they ignore the grammar or syntax and they focus on just simply communicating what they want. So a child might say, oh, me like doggy, right? All right, so we're going to do something similar. So we're going to focus on what we're trying to do instead of 
kind of the specific grammar and syntax. We're not going to worry about that yet. We'll come back and do that later. So the first step here for human was for each product subcategory. Whenever you find yourself writing down or thinking in terms of like that, for each Think row by row, right? Each, you're going subcategory by subcategory. You're going row by row, and that is iterator. And it's represented in Power BI with the letter X. Why? You'll see that soon. We'll meet the X family of functions, right? So X is the iterator. It says row by row. So, you know, kind of the baby step. Again, it's not proper syntax. I understand that. Uh, Power BI is not going to understand the X function. But I'm just going to write, write, I'm iterating X, that's iterator, over the product subcategory. And of course, the next one is easy. Next, I'm iterating on the customer table. So I'm going to write X customer, right? And after that, it's check sales year over year and filter. So for this, we're going to say, yep, check sales year over year, percentage greater than zero, and then filter the resulting rows. The next step, pretty similar, calculate the sales year over year measure and sum it all up. So again, not that different from human speech, but again, you need this stepping stone to be able to take the step after that. Now, of course, if you were to plug this into Power BI, it really wouldn't work. You would definitely get an error because that because we're not there yet. We're on step two, remember? It was three steps. So we have one more step remaining. Uh, so let's rewrite this for Power BI, and that is our step three. And this one is called machine learning, but really this one is more like machine teaching. Like we're teaching Power BI. It's like, okay, hey, I, I know how to do it. Let me teach you. I've broken it down step by step. I made it really easy for you, Power BI. Let me teach it to you, right? So, and this time we have to get the correct syntax because, again, I mean, humans. We are smart. We can deal with a lot of ambiguity. Power BI cannot. It needs precise instructions. So we're going to give that to Power BI. So let's get over to our baby steps and let's translate. But before we do that, though, we got to talk about the Power BI core concepts. Now, these core concepts follow the classic 80-20 rule. That means if you put your effort on learning these core concepts, you're going to be putting in 20% of the effort and getting 80% of the results, which is amazing because if you don't do that, then you probably know that life, you're kind of struggling with the jigsaw puzzle of Google and YouTube, and it can be really frustrating because you haven't mastered the core concepts. You're trying to fit this puzzle together. So, uh, let's start with the first one, which you actually already know. We have talked about it. I talked about X functions are iterators. They go row by row. So right for each subcategory, for each customer, things like that. Now there's a whole family of these. There is some X, min X, max X, average X, count X, and many more. But the more important core concept is that X functions work backwards. Yes, I know. It took me a while to figure that out. It gets straightforward once you know it, but it's important to know this concept. So X functions work backwards. What do I mean by that? That means if you look at sum X, min X, max X, average X, the X, the iteration row by row happens first and then the operation happens in the end. So if you just were to pick up one of these, the sum X, and they all work the same way, this is the syntax, right? So it says, a sum x and the table and expression. But the way I want you to read this is x, right? So x, iterate over the table. That's step one. That's over here. And then for each, so iterate is just going row by row. That's all it is, right? And for each row, evaluate this expression. Evaluate this expression. But the sum happens at the very end, even though it's written at the beginning. I wish you could write this this way. It'll make more sense to me. But I want you to remember this core concept and understand. So every time you're reading an X function, I want you to read it this way. All right. And of course, as I said, the each of the other ones work the same way. The iteration happens first row by row. And the first part, sum, min, max, average happens at the very end. Now that we know the score concepts, now we can look at our DAX baby step and kind of see that, oh, 
iteration happens first and the sum happens in the end bada bing bada boom of course that is a sum x function but again so the sum moves first you write it first even though it happens in the very end and then you write the x function now this is good we're making progress here going from human learning to machine learning but of course power bi is kind of dumb no just kidding i didn't say that i didn't say that but power bi is very precise so it's going to say oops cannot compute cannot compute right and that's because power bi the syntax for sum x is that it expects a table oops we don't have a table. We have a column. We're saying, oh yeah, iterate over the product subcategory. Hey, but there's an easy solution here using the values function. And that's exactly what it does. It takes a column of values and turns them into a table. So problem solved. So we're gonna just substitute that in our function and we're good with this step. So we have kind of translated the human baby speak to Power BI speak. So um, I'm going to keep dimming out the ones that we have already tackled just so we can, we know our progress, we can track our progress. So we've already done that one. We have translated that to Power BI, the machine learning. Let's focus on this one, calculate, and we're going to move it all the way up. Why are we doing that? I mean, calculate is supposed to happen in the end. We're moving it all the way up. Uh, hold on to that thought. We will surely come back and talk more about calculate. It's one of the most fascinating functions after all. So again, so we have dim dot calculate, but we will come back to it. So let's focus on the next one and look at this. Oh, go row by row and in the end filter. That's the classic X function pattern. And of course, this one is going to be combined to be filter X. We write filter first, even though it happens in the end. And you know, X comes after that. So that's how we write it or not quite. And again, if you try this with Power BI, it's gonna go into that cannot compute mode again because this is a, um, uh, another core concept and which is that some X functions are actually missing the X. And of course, the most famous of them all is the filter X. And there's no X in the filter X function. The X is missing. But every time you see filter, I want you to think filter X because it is an X function. It is an iterator. It works just the same as some X, min X, max X and its buddies. But alas, X is not there. So you're just going to have to remember that core concept. Um, so here uh, we had it written right but we're gonna drop the x just so power bi is kind of happy all right so we're gonna dim that part out that means we're left just with this next piece and of course that's easy that's simply the expression that we pass to filter right so it's going row by row and it's evaluating that and of course so it's going to row by row that's an iteration filter x and in the end it's going to filter and give us our growth customers now let's clean this up. Let's um, add some closing brackets and maybe pretty it up. And of course the DAX, if you're writing this in Power BI, it's gonna light it up in these beautiful colors and make it more readable for you. And that is our final measure. Oh wait, I had promised that I'm gonna talk about calculate, so let's do that. So what's the deal with this? Calculate kind of happened in the end when we were talking step by step, but we moved it up. And that's another DAX core concept. Yeah, you knew that was coming. And this, uh, the simple concept here is calculate works outside in. I just want to point out that a lot of these core concepts, they're not complicated. It's just simple, but yeah, you just need to learn it and know it. And once you know it, then it's going to give you that 80, 20 results. It's going to make everything else working in DAX, working in Power BI easy for you. So let's stay here for a bit. Calculate works outside in. What does that mean? That means that the, the outer filters, these guys, they're actually evaluated first, right? So think about this expression is written first, but the filters, which are written later on, they're actually calculated first and only then. So it's outside in, outside in. So it's going to calculate all the filters and apply those. And only then the inner expression is evaluated last. And that is why calculate 
is written this way. So even though we're writing it earlier here, but it's going to do the filter first, right? It's going to do the filter first and the calculate step actually happens last. So there we have it, my friend, we have our measure and now we can unlock all the awesomeness that we saw when the, I was demonstrating the problem, right? We can write other measures like that with growth. We can new declining lost and we can do waterfall charts. And again, we can have product or territory and I can, we can slice and dice it with that, with the awesomeness that Power BI has. So there it is, my friend. So again, it th didn't matter whether you felt it was easy or hard at this specific problem. It was not about this specific problem. I just use this as, as an example to demonstrate to you the approach that you can use, right? To, to write any DAX measure in these three easy steps. And the approach is always going to be the same. Step one is human learning. Slow yourself down, dumb yourself down, write it out step by step what you're doing and then see if you can translate do that baby language thing where you can just write out kind of a dax outline you don't have to have the right syntax but put in that oh i think this is going to be a filter this is going to be a calculate this is going to be x function or something else and of course step three where you translate it with correct syntax and there it really helps to understand some of the really simple core concepts involved in dax and power bi but I had promised that there is a more important lesson and that is true. And here's the thing, my friend. So I realized that Power BI, probably especially DAX, can feel frustrating for non-techie business users like you and me. And um, I was in the same space. And of course, now we have members joining our Learn Power BI program and other training programs. And I hear them say things like this. So I know the pain. I've lived it. and I hear our students talk about it when they are starting the program and they say things like, Avi, I've been using Power BI for more than a year, but it still feels like I'm on thin ice. Or they say that, hey, when things work, it's great. When they don't, it's uh, right. Uh, I love this one that, hey, I just write my DAX measures and cross my fingers, hope it works. Uh, this one breaks my heart, though, when people start saying things like this, like it was easier in Excel. My friend, I love Excel. It's a great tool, uh, maybe the best tool of the 20th century. But guess what? We're not in the 20th century anymore. We are in the 21st century. And uh, Excel, um, you can take it to the next level with Power BI, right? So this is a big red flag. If you are starting to feel this way, then I think you, you missed something. Something went wrong in your Power BI journey. Because here's the thing, right? If you, if, if, going through Power BI, trying to learn Power BI is, is letting you feel that you're not good enough or you're not smart enough or you're not trying hard enough. I want you to know that none of these things are true because the truth is that once you understand the core concepts in Power BI, you realize that Power BI and DAX is, is not about being smart. If anything, it's about dumbing yourself down, getting that step by step and simply applying those concepts step by step. So hey, uh, next step for you, if you are looking to master the Power BI core concepts, uh, not just in DAX, but Power Query, relationships and data modeling, DAX visualizations, then join our Learn Power BI program at the link shown here. And of course, I talked about the 80-20 rule once you learn and master these core concepts, which I explain in my simplified, non-techie, business user-friendly way in my program, it gives you 80% of the results. And think about what that's going to unlock for you, what that's going to, uh, uh, you know, what the kind of impact you can create for your team, for your organization, and for your clients. Uh, otherwise, if you are, have you know, kind of master the core concepts. And if you're looking to continue your journey beyond that, then definitely consider our Power BI Advanced program at the link shown here. I look forward to seeing you inside our uh, Learn Power BI family. Take care and power on.